here we go. Breakfast with beefcake number seven. Nice. I think just saying beefcake number seven is easier. What do you think? Beefcake number seven. Beefcake number seven. Here we are. Because we're not actually eating anything. Yeah, and I have a hard... I think my bees are... Just makes it difficult on me. Just another thing to worry about. Broadcast school. Broadcast. Maybe we should go to broadcast school. I should do more flexibility training when I'm warming up. Enunciation. I don't. I don't even open my mouth when I talk. That's my problem. I sound like a complete hick when I talk. That's my problem. I sound stupid. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Speaking of stupid, (laughs) this is the blog for the day. Stupidity achieving new heights. Hmm. I've been excited about. This blog because really just because I wanted to tell you about the time that I ran over myself with my own vehicle. <laughs> I think you ended the last podcast with that or something. I remember you saying, "Next time we talk, we're going to talk about me getting re- getting ran over by my own truck." I try to slide that in just whenever any opportunity that I get, I try to tell people about the time I ran over myself. Well, here you go. Tell us about it. All right. Well. I can't remember where I was going. I had pulled up to the house, and I had to turn around and leave very quickly. Of course, I had been drinking. Okay. I went up to my front door, and I lived on a driveway that slanted downward, just very gradual. As I was going to the front door, I heard my motor getting a little bit further and further away. I still had the <laughs> truck going. Is this a, like a regular pickup truck, or is it like a green and like the yard spraying truck? No, this is a one-ton dually. <laughs> <laughs> this is a huge vehicle. <laughs> And so it, it's going down the hill and I, I run after it. And so I'm running next to it. I open the door and my thought process was I'm going to open the door and then I'm going to press the emergency brake with my hand. <laughs> <laughs> and so I opened the door. My plan was working brilliantly. Uh, uh, you know, the sprint was working. The door was open. I was about to press down with my hand. And about that time it hit the neighbor's curb across the street and Bonk me right in the forehead. Ouch. And the next thing I know, I'm just waking up like in the iron cross position, laid out in my neighbor's front yard. So it straight up knocked you out. It's It knocked me unconscious. I don't have any idea if it was 30 seconds or 30 minutes. But I woke up <laughs> and was like, whoa. And so my first reaction was I just got in my truck and I drove away. <laughs> and... As I was driving, there was a policeman who was probably 200 yards down the road sitting at a park who didn't see it or didn't, couldn't tell what was going on or whatever. But that was just, I guess I'm just using that as an example of how incredibly stupid I can be. Mm-hmm. And that's just one example of about a thousand examples that I could sit here and talk to you about just off the top of my head. But everybody has those examples. I think so. Do you think everybody has things that are equally as stupid? Absolutely. Well, my question is, why do we get so frustrated when stupid humans do stupid things? I don't know. That's a great question. Do you why? do you rage over stupid things? Um, <laughs> when you see somebody doing something stupid, does it really, do you take it upon yourself to... Not necessarily confront that person, no. but do you just really, really want to tell them how stupid they are? <laughs> you know, I I avoid confrontation at all costs, and and all, but I, I am not one to let anything that if I see someone doing something stupid, it's it it just goes, it just rolls right off of me. And if it's something that's entertaining, I might get some entertainment out of it, but I'm not. I'm not going to let myself be affected by it. And so it, it get, does roll right off of you because I, I know that you're not outwardly confrontational, uh-huh. but I didn't know if on the inside you let that stuff drive you nuts. It just depends on, I, it's, and that's probably that way with everybody, but it just depends on, I, I think it would depend on the situation. I mean, if, if I were walking down the street and saw you <laughs> get knocked out by your truck and be like, man, <laughs> hey, this is a good ex- Here's here's something. So when we uh, when we came out here uh, to do a podcast with uh, Deb- Debbie Lindsay, right? We did it at what was it, like six thirty in the morning, and so at the time when I was driving here early in the morning, it was still relatively dark, right? And we are your your house is out in the country, 
And so as I turned into your neighborhood, there was a truck on the side of the road with head stall, parked on the side of the off of the road, headlights on, the cars running. He he was obvious that he had just plowed over. It was garbage day, and he had just ran over two of those big garbage uh, cans that were out at the dump, at the road waiting for the the garbage people to come pick them up. Right. And so I look at it, there's trash everywhere. And the guy's just sitting in his truck. Like he had just ran over these, <laughs> these two big trash cans. So I, I thought for a second, I was like, do I go, do I go check on that guy or, or do I just keep going? Like this guy just did something really stupid. He's probably drunk. Right. It's probably, I don't know. It's still dark. It's early in the morning. 6 a.m. And, and at the Marshall County line. At the I would Mar- say the chances and, are pretty good. In Vihalia, Mississippi. Like, if I get out and go try to help talk to this guy, it's not going to – it's not <laughs> it's, it's, this is not a good idea. That's you know when the I mean? crack's going to come out. Right. And so at, the, so at some point, I got a little bit of entertainment out of it, but I did not – I wasn't about to get involved with the situation or let it bother me in any way. But if you change that to some someone had a real wreck, like if the, if this car was wrapped around a tree in somebody's front yard and there was a guy laying out in the yard, you know what I mean? Obviously injured and needed help, then then I would get involved. Does that make sense? Yeah, it so, makes perfect. So it depends on the situation, you know. I, I think more of the not necessarily involvement. I'm just wondering, like, how much of your time and energy is consumed by people doing stupid things. Like I, I talk <laughs> to some people sometimes who just sound, they're so focused on everybody else and just stupidity drives them insane. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you just have to wonder at what point are you being more stupid or stupider, whatever the term might be <laughs> than the other person. Right. You know, the, the person that you're harping on most likely is not going to change their ways. And they're certainly not going to change their way because you pointed it out to them. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine somebody saying, Wilson, you're a fucking idiot for knocking yourself in the head with your truck. And then me <laughs> being like, you know what? I need to change some things about myself. Right. <laughs> I tried to, uh, especially lately, like um, the last couple of years, tried to work really hard on not worrying about other people in general. Well, you, that's that, uh, as, I mean, as it relates to like other people's behavior. You know, well, what? you said earlier that you let stuff roll off of you outwardly. And I do that. I do a pretty good job of that today outwardly, but I have a more difficult time on the inside. Because mm-hmm. in the inside, I just play it through and play it through and play it through. And, and I just, learning to shut that off is, is difficult for me. Right. Do you road rage? I do not road rage. I drive, I, you can ask my wife, I drive like an old man. People probably road rage over me. Yeah. Like I drive five miles under the speed limit the majority of the time. And that, that's me. I'm the road ragey. Yeah. Not the road rage. Yeah, you would you you would be the person that drives up behind me and is like, This asshole needs to get out of my way. You would, no, we would be stuck side by side, like on the interstate <laughs> and, and neither one of us going more than three miles over or under. <laughs> right. We'd really have a problem. Yeah. Yeah, I got a ticket one time. I got a ticket uh in a school zone and it was it was four it was like four almost four o'clock in the afternoon. I was driving by my son's school, I was on the way home from work. You know how you just don't think about things and like, especially in your daily routine where you're like driving to work and you like, all of a sudden you're at work and it's like, oh, I don't even remember the drive here. You know, uh, you, yeah. just, you just, all, you were on like autopilot. Well, I was on autopilot on the way home. It's my son's school. I knew school was out because almost four o'clock wasn't really paying attention. The normal speed limit is uh, 45 miles an hour in the school zone. It's 25, 20, right? I was going 38. (laughs) Like I wasn't even speeding to begin with, you know, it just happened to be a school zone and, and school, there were no cars around, but it was right before they turned the flashing lights off. You know what I mean? Uh huh. 
and there just happened to be a cop sitting there. I'm going 38 miles an hour, which is 18 miles over the speed limit. And I got like a $275 ticket, but I wasn't paying attention. I was, but that's, that's an example of, that's just how I drive. Like normally just driving 38 miles an hour. Normally the speed limit's 45 and I get a ticket in this, in the school zone. I got pulled over <laughs> leaving your uh, neighborhood. I was, I was fertilizing a yard out in your neighborhood on Goodman road. Uh-huh. And you know, that scene in Tommy boy where he, he gets high on accident and he's driving down the road and he gets pulled over and he's like, Do you yeah. know how fast you're going? Like <laughs> seven, you're going seven miles an hour <laughs> on Goodman road. I got pulled over because I was going like 45 and a 55 or 40 and a wow. 50 for going too slow. And he's like, <laughs> Man, you you just all you gotta do is look behind you at the line of traffic. You got to see how dangerous this is. <laughs> wow. I was like, man, I had no idea. I just <laughs> I just wasn't paying any attention. And I go through every day my life exists on autopilot. Mm-hmm. And I guess that the medical term for that would be just I'm an idiot. But somebody pointing out, somebody getting frustrated with me and calling me an idiot or getting frustrated at how I am will not help that situation. Right. And it will not help any idiot situation. So I guess I, I'm here in defense of all idiots. And I, I guess it's fair. It's, it's important to point out that like there's a difference between uh, you do, you're doing something stupid and, and I'm your friend and I want you to correct that. And I'm just like, why did you do that? You need to, you know, change or something, or if I'm your coach or, or whatever, you know, there are situations where it's important for you to say things, but I think what we're, I think what we're getting at is that if, if you, if you just find yourself being concerned with the actions and behaviors of other people all the time, then you should probably work on eliminating that habit. Right, because it will never work. Right. I see what you're saying, and there is a benefit in correcting correctable situations. Yeah. Like pointing out to somebody, you do this all the time. Mm-hmm. And then them saying, I, I had no idea. I'd never really thought of it that way. Because right. a lot of things, I've just never, I've never looked at it through that point in the prism. Right. So it was hard for me to, to see how ridiculous my behavior was. But Mm -hmm. driving behind somebody in traffic and raging because they don't use their blinker and pulling up next to them and saying, you're a dick, use your blinker. Yeah. That's, they're not going to go home to their wife and be like, I started using my blinker today. Yeah. Some some nice fella pulled up next to me and gave me the finger and told me to do (laughs) it. But is is this another example? Did we talk about the, uh, the football player that's doing his little protest? Last time, I can't remember if we did or not. But I don't. I don't know if we ever got into it or not. I, I think it, did, that, it uh, doesn't. It doesn't really. I, I, I wrote about it in a previous blog, so I bet that we mentioned. I it. mean, I, I, I. That's a good example of of people are just outraged at this guy, and I have absolutely no, I have no feeling towards that guy at all. I could care le- I couldn't care less. I think that that's why I started writing this blog and forgot what I was even writing it about Uh because of, uh, Colin Humperdinck who had (laughs) done what I I still don't, I guess I I know he didn't stand for the pledge of allegiance or the national anthem, but I'm not knowing what it was past that. It 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 doesn't, and it doesn't matter. Right. And I don't care. I, I couldn't, I can't imagine I can't imagine the person that's outraged by this and writes a three paragraph Facebook update on it. Like I don't I, I don't want you to be concerned so much with something like that. Well, oddly enough, I can totally relate to that person. I can uh-huh. see where that waste of time and energy, why you want to do that or feel a need to do that. And I'm fortunate that I don't see it from from that side anymore because if I let myself get into that then that's what I'll be doing. I'll be writing open letters to Humperdinck and, <laughs> you know, trying to make this point, and I'm just wound up and angry all the time. Right, and that's that's what kind of what I'm trying to say is there's nothing, there's not necessarily anything wrong with reacting that way, but I want you to realize that you're acting that way and realize that you could probably 
put that en- energy into something else. That's right. Cause it is, it will, it will drag your ass out. Like it will burn you down and you don't even realize that it's doing it. But when you start letting go of things like that, it really does give you a huge boost of energy. Yeah. Right. So with that, I'm going to wrap, let's, let's wrap this, uh, episode up, but I do want to, um, bring to the audience's attention, the absolutely incredible, um, programming that you have come up with for oh yeah lift heavy run long and the deadlift program that's right i'm excited about it um you know because we've been talking about the 5400 club the 5300 club we talk about that a lot and uh we make a big deal about the folks that uh get into that club but we never really talk at all about how we can how you can get into that club and how you can get that deadlift up or how you can um just get stronger like that so uh, I'm really excited that we are going to be putting this program out. I am too. We have so many people that contact us about their interest in getting into the uh, 50 mile, 400 deadlift club or the 300 mile deadlift, 300 pound, 50 mile, 300 pound deadlift club yeah. for the women. Um, and the the problem always seems to be the hurdle always seems to be the deadlift. Yeah. And so you taking this upon yourself to write a program to help get them there. Yeah. is is fantastic. Yeah, and it's and gonna be it's remember. gonna be fun too. Like, um, I'm really excited about it. I put I put a, lo- a lot of effort into it, and uh, I think it's gonna be uh, very enjoyable. And I I think it's also gonna solve a, a problem for a lot of people who might be out there running and not really don't really know how to go about learning and uh, getting their deadlift stronger. Or, you know, because they just don't know what to do. So this will be a big help for them goals, man. Fun stuff. That's right. We'll talk to you later. All right.